Hi everyone, welcome back to this finale of our three-part series on chord inversions around the circle of fifths with a lot of rhythm changes along the way. I don't know if that will be the title or the, uh, of this uh, uh, series, but uh, we'll have to figure out a title for this. Maybe you can leave us a good title in the comments, which will work very well for the YouTube algorithms. That will be fun. Now to move forward, the two things we haven't yet done is we haven't gone sort of upstream or against the flow of inversions. The inversions are wanting us to go this way. When we go in the authentic direction or counter circle, it wants us to go this way because that's how the inversions are taking us. But what if we say no to that and go against it? If you take C to F, this is with the flow, with the inversion flow. While if you take C to F, now this is against the flow, isn't it? So what's happening is you're going against the flow of the inversions. That's where you would normally go. But instead we are going... That makes it a bit melodic if you ask me. You can develop a small line. the piano but in a more musical and a melodic context you can go down so similarly when you have to go to G C to G normally the natural flow would take us down the piano but I want to now go up still kind of end where you started you started in the root position but your inversions are not going based on convenience isn't it Similarly, if I want to do C, F, B flat, E flat, which was my earlier method, I moved up piano because then the inversions were easy. Now I'll go down the piano and play the same chords. E, A, B, G, C. Repeat. C to the F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp, B, E, A, D. I'm kind of going against the flow of the inversions, so to speak, right? So <clears throat> this will test your knowledge of not only the inversion of the chord, but your survival instinct while playing chords. Because no matter what, you have to get to G from C. No matter what, you have to get from um, B to F sharp or from E minor to B minor. It just has to happen. So now... To make this a bit more rhythmically interesting or a bit more rhythmically challenging, I'm going to go with a note value reduction method. The note value reduction method would be, at least the way I'm thinking of this, it would be you start with your two-counted note. What is a two-counted note? It's a minim. A minim lasts for two beats. So one, two, one, two. Two. Then you go to a one and a half count note, which would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and, and one. So it'll be once at the one and the other time at the and. One and two, and four and one and two, three and four and one and two, right? One and two and a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note. While a minimum would be one, two. Three, four. Okay, then the other interesting one would be to go triplets, but don't play it as normal triplets where you divide the beat by three. Tuck it, tuck it. You instead 
one and a two and a three and a four. Now one and a two and a three and a four. One and a two and a three and a four. Right? One and a two and a three and a four. One and a two and a three and a four. So you could call these as minimum or half note triplets. One and a two and a three. And a because three of these will equal to a bigger note value which is a semi brief which lasts for four counts right one and two and three so what are the three speeds again one two three four one two minimum next speed one and two and three and four and one and two next speed one and two and three and a four and a one and two and three to do so two minims would equal to a bar of four, but three minim triplets would also equal to a bar of four uh, uh, beats in a bar or one semi-brief value. Okay, so we did minim, we've done dotted crotchets, we've done <coughs> uh, minim triplets, then let's do beat uh, on the beat stuff. One, two, three, four. One, two, that's the next speed. So we started one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two. Then we did one and two and a thing. Then we do on the beat. One, two, three, four. And then what's the next faster one? I'm going to nominate the dotted eighth notes. So it's on and then dotted, which will be one e, a two e, a e, a two e, and a three e, and a four e. So the dotted quaver, one e at and pom one e at and how do we go even more faster? So this will be 0.75 times the beat or 75% of the beat. The next one I'm going to nominate is even faster, which will be 66.67% of the beat or thir two thirds of a beat. So that would be your quarter note triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Which is essentially you're not doing one and a da da da. That would be normal triplets. Instead you're doing one and a um boom tuck kum dum tuck kum boom tuck. Creating this nice polyrhythmic what we call as a hemiola feel. Very Indian in nature as some of you might know. And each of these points are coming in at the two thirds of the beat. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two. One and a two and a. So six of these will end up happening over a bar of four beats. So one, two, three, four, one and a two and a three. That's your dotted quavers. One and a two. Then one and a two. Mm -hmm. Triplets, then that that quavers eighth notes. Next speed, things are getting fast. Now we are dividing my pulse by two. Earlier we multiplied it by two, four, one, two, three. Now we are dividing it by four, one, and then we go divided by three. That would be eighth note triplets. Tuck it, tuck it, one and a two and and finally dividing by four or whacking it at the twenty five percent mark of the beat. Now you may think, yeah, there are more percentages, isn't it? Yes, you can do quintuplets, you can do sextuplets, you can do all sorts of things. But I'm going to stick with the traditional ones on the beats. Off the beats, dotted notes and triplets. These are the common things we encounter. So let's now quickly put this into context by going around the circle of fifths with these different note values. So you're playing the chords over note values. So let's start with two counted notes, namely minims. One, two, three, four. 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 Now speed it up slightly with a dotted crotchet. I'm moving with the flow of the chords with my inversions. Uh, then what else? We'll do the triplets. So first the slow triplets, the minimum triplets. So that'll be one.
okay then we do now on the beat 2 3 4 1 self explanatory so instead of going dividing by two quavers we'll do dotted quavers which will be 0.75 of the beat there we go and then we can go a bit faster by doing quarter note triplets fast now then i can do quavers 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 then triplets 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a and finally tani and a tuni i can't do semi quavers maybe you can so you get the idea you're just readjusting note values along the way and trying to get faster and faster even though the tempo is remaining the same so if you remember all of the parts of this series the tempo has been the same or it can be the same in part number 1 we manipulated the time signature we went from 8 beats to 7 6 5 4 3 and so on part 2 what did we do to make it rhythmically quicker we took the salsa pattern and then we chopped it up we chopped it up first of all into two Uh, beat one, beat two had something different. Beat three, beat four had something different. And now in part number three, we are adjusting the note value from two hundred percent of the beat all the way down to twenty five percent of the beat. Two hundred percent of the beat is what now? Minims. And then twenty five percent of the beat is what? Semi quavers, which I couldn't do, but. you can try that it that will be really fast you might need to slow down your overall tempo to be about 60 beats per minute so in a nutshell we've moved around the circle of fifths clockwise and counterclockwise clockwise is the plagal direction moving in fifths and resolving in 4 to 1 Uh, we did major and minor chords from different inversion points different speeds then we did in the fourths or the counterclockwise direction where you're resolving in 5 to 1s and it's the authentic movement again we did major and minor chords with a lot of rhythmic variations so do stay tuned to our channel for a lot more lessons coming your way it will be on composition piano music theory ear training and a lot more even music production so do leave us in the comments what you'd like to learn and uh, you know what what excites you or what are what challenges you also in this huge field of music so thanks a lot for watching the series stay tuned don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for regular notifications and you can get all my notes on our patreon page not only for this series but for everything we have ever done on our youtube channel for just 5 dollars a month thanks for your support cheers catch you in the next one